This is the final video from 2.1. We're going to talk about cumulative relative frequency graphs, uh, using them to estimate percentiles. So here is a table showing the age when um, the first 44 presidents were inaugurated. So a cumulative, a cumulative relative frequency graph displays the cumulative relative frequency of each class of a frequency distribution. Sounds complicated, but it's really not that tough. So there, there were two people, two presidents who were inaugurated between 44. So that's 4.5%, an accumulative frequency of two. Now, if we jump to the next age group, 45 to 49, then there were seven in that group, which would be a cumulative total of nine, which would be cumulative total of 20.5%. So as we increase their age, we're adding in 13 new people, which is 29.5%. We're adding it to the previous two. So 13 plus 7 plus 2 gives us this 22 total frequency, and 22 out of 44 would be 50%. So it's actually going to be our median value right there. So this chart down here, or this graph, is a, a visual of this table, and it's called a cumulative relative frequency graph. So the first thing that they want us to do is interpret the graph or just tell us what you see or notice about this graph. And so these lines here represent the cumulative relative frequency based on the ages of the at their inauguration. So a couple of things to make a note of is that the graph starts to grow gradually at first. And then when it gets to about here, you can see it's a lot steeper, which means more of the presidents were inaugurated in this age. The, the, the group starts to increase a lot quicker. And then when you get past 60 about, it starts to get less steep again because there were fewer presidents that were at this age when they were inaugurated. So I'll write out my description here. So again, like I said, it grows gradually at the start because few presidents were inaugurated in their 40s. It gets steeper at 50 because most of them were at 50 when they were inaugurated or older than 50. And then it, it tapers off again at the end past 60 because not many people were older than 60 when they were inaugurated. Another thing I want to make sure I mention is uh, we can use relative frequency graphs to describe the shape of what the histogram would look like or what the dot plot would look like. So if you think about what a histogram would look like, this data, there would be some shorter bars from 40 to 45-ish. And then when we get to 50, there will be a bunch more data. So it'll be um, quite a few more bars or dots in this middle area. And then there would be, again, at after that middle chunk, there would be a, some some smaller bars afterward. So if you think about what the shape of that distribution looks like, this curve makes me see that this distribution or the histogram would be approximately normal because most of the data grows in the center and there's a little on the left and a little on the right. I'm gonna draw out what the different shapes would look like here in this region. So these will be helpful for you to describe the shape. Like we saw in our graph, if it grows gradually, then a lot, and then grows gradually at the end, that means it'll be roughly symmetric. If it doesn't grow much at the start, at the start, and then when you get to the end, it grows drastically, that means it will be skewed left. Most of the data will be at the end or at the higher values, and then vice versa. If it grows quickly at the start and then starts to taper off, that means there is a tail being stretched off to the right. So we can use these cumulative relative frequency graphs to answer all kinds of questions. For example, they want to know, was Obama, who was inaugurated at 47, unusually young? So basically what we want to do is we want to figure out his percentile. At an age of 47, was he older than most? Or was he younger than most? And we can find his percentile by using the chart here. So if we look at the age of 47, which would be, I don't know, right about here. We follow this up, we can figure out what percentile he was by going over and matching it with the cumulative relative frequency. 
So let's draw and see if we can make that right. It's better. So if his age is 47, it's about right there. Follow it up and over. I would say that's probably around 11. It's a little bit over halfway between these two. So we can say that he was older than 11%, or he is the 11th percentile with an age of 47. So if, he, if there are 11% of all presidents younger than him, I would say he's not unusually young, even though he might be relatively young, but not unusually young. So for this problem, we used his age, 47, to find his percentile, 11th. This way, we're going to go backwards. They want us to estimate and interpret what is the 65th percentile. So now we're going to start on the percentile, the cumulative frequency side, go up to 65 and follow it over to try and match which age is the 65th percentile. And so I'll draw that out. So based on my graph, um, let's say halfway here is about 70. So 65 would be here, followed over. I put that at about the 50, age of 58. Uh, age of 58 would be the 65th percentile. And so just so you know, you can, you can use um, relative frequency charts to find percentiles or to um, estimate what certain percentiles would be. Some helpful information from this might be, you could find what the IQR is from a distribution. All you would have to do is find the 25th percentile, which would be Q1, follow that over, mark the age, and then you could find the 75th percentile, which would be Q3. So follow up here and over. And you can see that's going to tell you um, Q1 and Q3, subtract them, and that's your IQR. We can also find the median by going to the 50th percentile and following it over to an age of, I don't know, around 55.